In fact, tomorrow, I don't even like to say it because I'll be arrested. Well, let's not say it. We need, we need to go, I'll say it. All right. We need to go in to the Capitol. We need to go into the capital. When it's time to live and let and you can't get another try. Something inside this heart is dying. You're in ruins. What are you thinking? It's getting out of control. Tim McVeigh went to Robert Millar's compound before he built the murder. That's something we can talk about later. Hey guys, Jose Galison. You're watching No Way Jose. You can find us on the No Way Jose YouTube channel, all the major audio podcatchers, and Rumble as well. Today, my guest is Ken Silva. I guess you could call, almost call this uh, part five of the Fed Files. That's actually you know what we're basing off an article he wrote. Uh, although this is kind of, I, don't, I mean, it's sort of in theme, but it's a little bit more specific to a specific vigil individual, and we'll get into that in a little bit. I do want to remind you guys how this works. Uh, if you're watching this, you know, you're not a patron, then you're getting this about a week later or so, usually, give or take the schedule. Uh, but if you want to get that stuff early, uh, see the content early, support my stuff, you know, help 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 me do what I'm doing. Uh, Patreon.com is Noe Jose 2020. The lowest level is just to get those early episodes, two bucks. And the highest level is my sponsors. I read those off every episode. I have Toad, who's my co host on Tower Gang, at Tower Gang Toad. I have at Abrogate D's. Then I have Kevin B. Clark, a full time guitarist and private music teacher in the New York area. Then at Z O V E R A C K. Then at underscore Infinite Zeal. Then Jacob Daniel of the Biblical Anarchy Podcast. You can follow him on Twitter at Biblical Anarchy. I was just on his show recently. That episode just dropped. Go check that out. Then Tim Tuttle at Jion Klebold. He's actually the one who made that intro. Then Stinky Sock 420 at Stinky Sock 420 if you want to follow him. Uh, singer of Bender Hardcore Band. Go check him out. Uh, yeah, help me. I appreciate you guys. Help me do what I do. Uh, and you guys keep me going. And uh, yeah, uh, toplobster.com. Actually, I don't think there's Yiki shirts are up there right now. He's renovating his site. So I've had a few people ask me about that. Uh, they should be putting those back up here soon. But maybe it's up at toplobster.com. Either way, I go peruse some of his other shirts. Uh, but yeah, with that, let's get Ken in here and get to it. What's up, man? How you doing? Hey, not too bad. How about yourself? Doing all right. Doing all right. It's been a little while since I've had you on, but it's a pleasure to have you back. You're probably... I don't know, you got to be up there for people I've had on the most, other maybe like Richard or something. And even then, I don't know. Yeah, definitely Richard has you more. But you're, you're up there for the, the, the person I've had on the most for this show. But you're cheering out good work, and so I appreciate you for that. And that's why I keep bringing you on. Uh, um, I guess uh, you've had you on enough. I don't feel like we really need to do an intro. Let's just go ahead and go, straight up get into it. If you could just provide just a quick <clears throat> summary of this story, because it kind of takes a lot of twists and turns, but just to kind of let the audience know what we're going to be delving into here. Uh, I, I wouldn't say this is accusations, but there's there's some loose implications of something here, but I'll pass it off to you. Okay, yeah. Well, well thanks as always for the opportunity to talk about my work. Uh, I guess a lot of your listeners probably know I've been writing a series of stories called The Fed Files, which is based on um, hundreds and hundreds of court documents filed by a federal prison inmate who used to be prominent in the Nazi movement in the mid 2000s. And basically now that he's in prison, he's accusing everybody that he was ever associated with, um, like a lot of people he's accusing of being feds. Um, and as a lot of my stories have shown, he's actually proven 
uh, he's provided records to actually prove a lot of his accusations, most significantly, like the guy who created the National Socialist Movement, which is one of the oldest Nazi groups in America and one of the largest and marched in Charlottesville, committed violence. That was co-founded by an FBI informant. He, he got records to prove that. Uh, he was subjected to severe torture, which I'd like to get into a little bit later. Um, and so, yeah, him being tortured is one of, one of the main reasons I've really wanted to get into this guy's story. Like, why does the government have it out for him so much? Um, so with all that said, recently I came across a court filing where he accused a fellow Nazi by the name of Christopher Cantwell of being an FBI informant. And uh, the Cantwell's name probably sounds familiar to a lot of libertarians because he used to be a libertarian. Uh, he was He's up in New Hampshire. He was part of the Free State Project. He was a host of uh, Free Talk Live. Um, eventually, he strayed away from libertarian libertarianism, uh, became kind of, I guess, the face of Charlottesville, I, I guess you could say. I, I, he was kind of the main character in a 2017 Vice documentary. Uh, I think John Oliver made fun of him. Uh, SPLC has written about him a lot. He kind of serves as like a useful idiot to discredit. Uh, I would argue he serves as a useful idiot to discredit the broader right wing dissident oh, movement. Yeah, yeah to, to kind of paint them all as clownish. I mean, wh whether intentional or not, he serves that purpose. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mo most definitely, most definitely. Um, so anyway, I all of the Fed files, the inmate Bill White. Today, um, I pretty much was trying to only report on the alleged FBI informants that he actually had records to, you know, prove or support his allegations. Guys like Robert Brannon, Jeff Scoop, Hal Turner. I did do a story where the DOJ accidentally uh, did a court filing that named a bunch of informants. So I named all of them on the on the grounds that government disclosed that information. Uh, but mostly it's been, you know, if, if I have solid proof, I will print his allegations. If not, I'm not going to actually put them in my articles. You could go read through his filings. I still think people should do that. There's a lot of stories I haven't touched on yet, uh, but that's kind of been how I've been approaching Bill White's filings. But I saw he accused uh, Cantwell of being an FBI informant. He says that when they were in prison together, uh, we'll, we'll get to how Cantwell landed in prison in, in 2021, 2022, but he says mm -hmm. that Cantwell solicited him uh, to, to join him, join the dark side, become an FBI informant. Uh, we'll get you out of prison early and we'll start a Republican, quote, so on, quote unquote, extremist group. Um, it, it sounded all very bizarre and unconfirmed, but I did. I reached out to Cantwell and told him, you know, I might be writing about a story, a story about this soon. You know, what what's your response to Bill White? You know, I kind of just lobbed it out there to elicit a response. And uh, boy, did I get a response. He went on his uh, radio show uh, about, uh, I think, a month or two ago and just talked a lot of shit about the Fed files, said it's all fake news, accused me of being uh, the agent of disinformation out to discredit, uh, you know, the true Nazi movement that he's, you know, a part of. And, and so there's a lot there, a lot of details to get into, but that's basically uh, Cantwell and the, you know, how we got to him. That's the whole story in a nutshell. Yeah. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I had some comments there, but I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll get into those later. Let's go ahead, I guess, and get into like maybe his legal troubles, or if you feel like that might be a good place to start. I, I guess I'll bring, I just find it funny that uh, uh, I, I feel like if he were to, you know, and maybe he will, maybe he won't, I don't care if he does, if he, you know, dissects this on an episode of his or whatever, I feel like he's going to have this instinctive, like, oh, look at these guys being faggots, making fun of me for being a racist. And you're like, for those who know me, like, and know my antics that doesn't really fit <laughs> so like i mean I, everyone's checked out tower gang i like i do offensive comedy or at least try maybe you don't find it funny but i'm making an attempt at it and like i have no problem talking about race realism and stuff but like there's, there's definitely a certain divide where like 
I, I don't know. Like, where the, there's a difference between the types of my, like me and, the, and whatever the fuck you would consider a Chris, Chris Cantwell. Because I mean, I, I, I don't know. And I believe my understanding too is he did drape himself in libertarianism for a while, even when he was in that like race realism phase or whatever. Uh, I think I don't know. I don't know specifically. Maybe he'd consider himself a small L libertarian now. But I, I just find that I don't know. I find it interesting. And and on the point of uh, we brought up about the that he kind of taints people by interacting with them. I'm not a person who likes you know relying on that because I think you should just talk to people. I mean I mean there's definitely a, an equation for people where it comes to a certain point where it's just not worth your effort for certain people to talk to him. Uh, but I, I don't like a God. There's a term for it. Was it a um, shit coding? I think is it's a term some people use. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and but at the same time, that is a phenomenon that the when these certain radioactive people interact with certain people, the society at large reacts to it, and so people are trying to elicit a certain response. Now I th I'm of the opinion I'm not a fan when people go, oh, so and so talked to Chris Cantwell. Look at this. But at the same time, I realize that is a phenomenon that happens. And I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if that's intentionally done, or at the very least, it's just a convenient thing people use to paint their political enemies in a bad light. And it's pretty usually comes off as dishonest to me. So I just wanted to, I guess, kind of disclaim that a little bit. But at the same time, now would I be surprised if there were intentional people within certain communities that have you know, views that would be considered to be radioactive and they serve that purpose, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised. That doesn't mean I endorse people going clutching their pearls and going, oh my, look at this. And you're like, I don't know, why don't you just interact whatever the idea he's presenting, call it stupid and move on. I mean, there is a certain level of uh, ridiculousness where you go, I think this guy might be a fed. But yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I think, I can't well, I think for a long time, it's kind of border on that. He's gotten those accusations for a long time. This isn't the first time this has been presented. And I, I'm not at all saying this is sure is true either, because we're taking to some extent the word of Bill White here. You're not even really taking his word. You're just reporting what he said. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, like you were kind of getting at, if it wasn't for his response, we wouldn't even be talking about this. You probably wouldn't have written anything. So, yeah. I mean, he kind of is the one who made it interesting by bringing it out. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and get into it. We'll definitely, you know, kind of maybe punch him around a little bit more later when we dissect like his retort to you guys, because that's where it does get really... I mean, I don't know how we can't cover that without laughing. So, <laughs> but, uh, all right, I'll pass it off to you. Uh, yeah, so you said allegations that he's uh, an, an informant have been swirling around him for years, and that's kind of how he ended up in prison again. Uh, so after Charlottesville, you know, that, that whole thing was a disaster, and all, all the Nazis were left kind of fighting with each other about, you know, what happened. And uh, some interesting stuff came out around 2018. Uh, I'm reading from my article now, so bear with me if I'm a little slow. But uh, basically, after Charlottesville, I guess he was talking to another neo-Nazi named Andrew Arnheimer, who is kind of this computer hacker guy from the 90s. I think he lives abroad now, um, uh, I guess a, a, a crypto-Nazi or something like that. But uh, So they, they were exchanging messages, and Christopher Cantwell disclosed to him that uh, I, I'm talking to the cops. I'm going to talk to the feds soon, too, most likely. Uh, he, he's referring to the fact that he's going to talk to the FBI about Antifa's role in Charlottesville and how they were the, the bad guys. Um, and now, Aurenheimer, I'm just going to refer to his nickname, Weave. Uh, he replied, that's fucking shitty scumbag behavior. Like You, you don't talk to the feds under pretty much any circumstances, uh, Cantwell, he insists that he's only going to talk to the feds about Antifa. Uh, he tells Weave, I'm going after uh, Philly ARA, which is the anti-racist action. That was the precursor to Antifa. Not throwing our own people under the bus. We weren't the bad guys last August, and Charlottesville is ignoring that fact. The feds want to bust Antifa, and I'm going to help them. So Weave leaks uh, these screenshots of these te text messages in uh, March 2018. It causes a stir in the far right, like, yeah, Cantwell's talking to the feds. And so Cantwell takes it upon himself to publish on his blog an article entitled, I am, an Efe I am a federal informant, uh, where he attempted to explain himself. 
Yeah. Joke or revealing the method? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And you could argue that, you know, that article gave me enough justification coupled with Bill White's accusation uh, to write, you know, my story. But it, it's a little bit complicated. So he, he posts, I am a federal informant. A couple days later, he posts another article why I'm talking to the feds. He says, quote, I'm privy to information I cannot make public, which strongly suggests the FBI is going after Philly Antifa. If these scumbags get indicted as they should, it basically torpedoes the case against me. So as we know now, that never happened. His ego continues seeing as to how there is absolutely no chance I could snitch on our guys, even if I wanted to, on account of our guys not having committed a crime. I don't see how this could be a bad thing. Again, he airs there. Uh, there are people currently on trial still for Charlottesville. Uh, they shouldn't be. It's pretty much trumped up dubious charges. But nevertheless, he was wrong. Uh, you know, some of the some of the guys have been charged with with crimes. So I, I, I do want to point out what a childish view that is. Like how Phil, like what, and, and this is, we'll get into his retort or like his retort against you later. Uh, but he is like, even just from a logical perspective, just all over the place. <laughs> like it doesn't logically follow what he just said there that, yeah. Oh, well, oh, like, Oh, well, if I didn't, you guys didn't do anything. So what, like, there's nothing I could tell on you for, like, for one, that's giving, that's giving a whole lot of good faith interaction to the FBI, but like, and he knows it, that. Like the yeah, thing is, yeah. like can't well he doesn't have like a low IQ. He's he's not a total idiot. He's well read. Uh, he worked for Cop Block that that was big on Facebook about ten years ago, showing all the police wrongdoing. He knows, like nothing good comes from talking to the feds. It's only gonna. You know, they're only going to use your words against you. He found that out the hard way later. Uh, but so after this whole spat in 2018 blows up, every, uh, his fellow Nazis are kind of fucking with him now because they all think he's a Fed. A group called the Bull Patrol, which is named in honor of Dylan Roof, the uh, Charleston mass shooter, the guy uh, who shot a bunch of black people in a church. Yeah, with a goofy bowl cut, yeah. Yeah, yeah, with a goofy bowl cut. Uh, so the Bowl Patrol starts prank calling his show and just fucking with him, like every broadcast, not really letting him, you know, do his thing. And he's fuming about this. He, get, he gets very angry and he tries to dox members of the Bowl Patrol after they actually posted some pornography on his website or something like that. So... He knows one of the members of the Bull Patrol, and he's uh, extorting that guy to give up the identity of the Bull Patrol leader. Um, he's threatening to rape the guy's wife in front of his kids, like really nasty stuff. Uh, keeps threatening them. They, they keep going back and forth. He, he also called child abuse and neglect hotline to try to get the guy's kids taken away from him. I like real, real which, shitty behavior. Which, which, I mean, this plays to his talk, his point about talking to the FBI and this earlier, like I would say, generally speaking, and like I'm an anarchist, but I, there, I mean, there are times I think people probably should talk to cops, the FBI, uh, uh, you know, what, what a family service, I forget what the heck the, the name of the, I'm farting what the name of the family services or whatever the hell it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but like, so, like, obviously, if you see a kid that's in a situation that you don't have any way you yourself can take care of it and you think that needs to be dealt with, but his reasoning for for this is is that, that in, in the article, I remember it said his reasoning was because he, he used drugs and he was a member of, like, a far-right organization or something like that, which, like, what? Like, that on its face right there, like, that is, like, we can just stop there. Like, I'm not, not saying that, like, that's conclusive he's a Fed, but conclusive, like, this guy, like, if he's not a Fed, you guys need to not be interacting with this dude. Like, exactly. Like, like what? Like, it's one thing if your reasoning is legitimate. Like, I've seen abuse. I've seen there was some. Oh, I saw this car accident, so I'm just giving you, you know, as a cop, what happened, so you can. Like, I mean, just because you generally don't agree with some of the authorities doesn't mean like there aren't legitimate things they do that maybe you in some way need to you know facilitate so, like, exactly yeah. but his reasoning for all of this is pretty dubious and this one is just flagrant <laughs> so yeah yeah, yeah. That, that i agree for sure uh 
And so he eventually files a complaint with the local police in Keene, New Hampshire, about these Bull Patrol guys. Uh, when that failed, he goes to the FBI. Uh, but little does he know, he he's, thinks he's informing to the FBI about the Bull Patrol, but the FBI was actually building a case against Cantwell for threatening to rape the one guy's kids. And so this this is probably a key point in the story where to, your to listeners clarify, to clarify just to be fair. Yeah, I mean both are really bad, but he threatened to. If I, I mean I remember reading your article, maybe maybe you're you, it's some other specific thing you didn't include in there. But he said he would rape his wife in front of his kids, so it wasn't raping his kids. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, both are, both are pretty awful, but <laughs> yeah. but it is a a very large uh, degree and jump of awfulness from one to the other. So. Yeah, that's true. I, I misspoke. Thanks for correcting there. Otherwise, yeah, he might uh, pounce on that one little uh, slip of tongue. Yeah. Uh, it, but I think a lot of listeners might say, well, like, so the FBI actually was building a case against Cantwell. Doesn't that prove he's not a Fed? And, you know, it, uh, this would be pure speculation, but it could be Fed on Fed violence where he was trying to dox another FBI informant and the FBI didn't like that. He could have initially approached his handler saying these bull patrol guys are out of control. The handling agent says, you know, fuck off. So instead he tries to circumvent the handling agent and go through uh, local police and then like another FBI field office or something like that's speculation, but that's just one way that he could have been an informant at the time, or maybe he, for some by some miracle, he actually wasn't an informant at that time. But after he's arrested, this is where he gets sent to the same prison as Bill White after he's convicted of threatening these Bull Patrol guys. He gets sent to the Communications Management Union, put on the same cell block as, as White. And when this happened, actually, a lot of liberals, you could probably search Bill White and Chris Cantwell on Twitter and find like liberal journalists and activists saying like, why are you allowing these guys to be on the same cell block? This is insane. Uh, it's a communications management unit, like which is designed to prevent uh, potential terrorists and extremists from communicating with each other and their outside networks. So like, what the hell's going on here? Um, and we know they're on the same cell block because Bill White was helping Chris Cantwell with his legal work for Charlottesville uh, civil litigation, because as the listeners who've been paying attention to the Fed files know, Bill White is uh, very adept at using the court system to get information out. And he's a very good litigator, even though he's not a lawyer. Uh, uh, quick, any, I, do, I yeah. want to back up real quick. You said he was in the CMUs. Because I, I do, I just wanted to emphasize that because that's a frequent thing that comes up, especially with the type of stuff you cover and I cover. A lot of these big name, uh, you know, cases, you know, especially particular to domestic terrorism or whatever the hell, extremism, stuff like that. They're typically, and a lot of them end up in the CMU, and like the, you know, that's where the uh, Michigan guys end up. Some of them end up in CMUs. So, and you do make a point in your. Uh, and you mean, I'm sure maybe you were getting to it that how these may almost operate some of these, especially it would make sense. Uh, I didn't catch seeing you the first uh, time I read it. So uh, this makes sense more because when I first read, it, I was like, what is like a normal prison? Like, yeah, I guess maybe it would be infiltrated. To, like the feds would be in there talking to people somewhat. But being a CMU makes it a very distinct, separate thing. And it gives them much more control over these people, too, to be able to shuffle around as they need to. Obviously, I don't know the logistics of that place. But my point being is, if you want to manipulate someone to do your work as a Fed, uh, the CMU would be a good place for you to hang out at and, uh, you, know, yeah. you know, pick your marks, essentially. Yeah, the Bureau of Prisons has an intelligence unit that largely focuses on CMU. Like a lot of the rationale is um, you need... An intelligence unit, you need like analysts fluent in Arabic in case there's a Muslim uh, prisoner calling. You need somebody to be able to understand what he says. But yeah, the intelligence unit, according to Bill White, uh, operates uh, much like the FBI has a network of spies and everything. In fact, if I skip down later in my story, Bill White, probably the most interesting thing he told me um, in all my communications with him is that uh, he, he believes about 40% of the inmates 
sentence. And so you, you, when they incarcerate somebody there, they're just surrounded by feds and, and, you know, the government can manipulate in all kinds of ways when everybody's an informant, but you. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It becomes an so, open secret that, you know, that everyone's an informant. So there's like, there's no shame in being like, well, whatever, you know, you're, you're not in an environment surrounded by people who are like, you better not be talking by the, to the feds. Cause everyone's talking to the feds. That too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And so this is where they're, um, you know, Bill White's helping Cantwell with his legal filings. And at one point in late December 29th, 2021, according to Bill White, Cantwell approached him in the CMU and told Bill that Chris was working for the FBI and that an attorney wanted to meet with Bill to negotiate his release. Bill White thinks that the attorney that Chris Cantwell was talking to was uh, Timothy Heafy. Oh, that's an interesting name because that guy's been involved in uh, Nazi terrorism cases for decades. He actually re wrote a report on what went wrong uh, with Charlottesville. Uh, I think he wrote that for the, like the Virginia government. Uh, but then he became a uh, lead investigator on the January 6th commission, uh, which makes this next allegation very interesting. Uh, Bill White says that Cantwell... Uh, told him that the FBI wanted him and Cantwell to start a, quote, Republican extremist group to target, quote, white supremacist scumbags. Uh, so I guess uh, Bill White, what he's saying is that him and Cantwell would have started a group. And I guess the, the purported rationale for that group would be to draw in the more violent fringe Republicans and then, I guess, entrap them just to get them off the streets. Um, and then this is, so this part's pretty dubious. Uh, Bill White says the FBI would make me a leader of the Republican Party, release me from prison in early 2022, and eventually pardon me. And that sounds like a scret stretch. Like uh, he's get, he's supposed to be in prison until 2037. It sounds really unlikely that that would have happened, but he does swear that that's what. Cantwell told him whether or not that was a legitimate offer. That's just what Cantwell uh, told him, according uh, uh, to, to White. Yeah, and you're also it's his information that he's relaying that was relayed to him from someone else. There could be some maybe he misinterpreted something. So because I mean Republican leader is pretty vague. What does that even mean? It's that so, is, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Like, uh, does does he mean, you may not even literally mean the Republican Party. It could mean some other fringe caucus they're making or some bullshit. So, uh, yeah. Or could, yeah. So prop him up as like, kind of like a Nick Fuentes character yeah. or something like that, like a thought leader. Uh, who knows? Yeah. Uh, so that's his allegation that I found in the court filings. Uh, Bill White said he turned down, he turned down the offer. Cantwell had also urged him to... Uh, stop being a pagan Nazi and convert, become a radical traditional Catholic, which I find interesting now that the FBI has this operate, like they're targeting our so-called radical Catholics. So that's just another little interesting tidbit. It might not necessarily be, um, you know, significant, but it's interesting to note. And so. They also said they stop making fun of the Jews, which I thought was weird. <laughs> Which, like, because, I mean, I don't know, because, I mean, if you look at him now, he doesn't back away from it. But although the only bit of his content I've probably ever watched is what I watched and prep for this. I've never watched anything of his stuff before. So maybe he doesn't talk about that a lot. Maybe he was just doubling down on the Jew rhetoric for for the sake of to protect his, you know, reputation. Because it's almost like he's being called out as being an informant. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I just thought that was a weird little tidbit in there. But also that does, whatever plan he may have been working with, obviously conjecture, assuming Bill White's word, uh, that may not be the plan that ended up going, you know, happening. It may have been a different plan. So because, uh, I mean, if he was trying to be propped up as Republican leader, I guess it would make sense to drop the uh, some of the more uh, more uh, lambastic <laughs> rhetoric, I guess, like the uh, the Jew stuff, particularly. Uh, Cause he doesn't back down on that. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't. <laughs> I, and I was listening to a podcast where uh, Cantwell was on with Ian Freeman of free talk live, maybe like a year ago. It was when Cantwell got out of prison and he, I guess he's talking to his old libertarian buddy. And initially um, it was Cantwell's show and 
Ian Freeman said shit and uh, he's like, Oh, am I allowed to swear? And can't was like, actually, you know, I'm trying, this is trying to be a more toned down show. We're trying to, you know, be more legitimate. So maybe he strayed away from that. I, I know in his show where he criticized me, the, the title I think was old school radical agenda. So maybe he's like, Hey, we're, we're going old school today. I'm, this is like 2017 Cantwell style. Who knows? I mean, the guys, uh, the guys out there. So I guess, yeah, that, I, that's pretty much the, the story in a gist up until I contacted Cantwell, but that's pretty much the whole saga as it pertains to white and Cantwell in, in prison. All right. Well, I guess we, this is where we get into his uh, accusations. I'll start off. I'll play like a little minute uh, clip from his show, which I, this kind of just uh, I'm not going to go through a bunch of his clips. Uh, there's definitely a lot we could have gone through there. But uh, I don't know for not beating a dead horse. I feel like this little little bit I'm about to play, which kind of is his retort to your overall thesis. Although I guess you're not necessarily straight up saying it in the Fed files or just like here's reports. Make of them what you will. Although I guess it is like kind of implying that this is a possibility, uh, but yes, yeah, so I'm gonna he's, his straw man of what me and and your b beliefs I would assume are as well to some extent at least. Uh, boop. And the more you talk, the less I have to. So please do give us a call. As I saw this come up, you know we, these stories pop up from time to time, and it's amusing to me that they're like, oh my god. You know, these people are threatening the government. Can you believe the audacity of these people? And I'm like, I can't believe their restraint is it actually. That's the more difficult thing to comprehend that, you know, that these people have been so well behaved for so long. You know, I was reading today about two things that really irked me. In addition, before I came across this headline, I was reading about Ray Epps and him, you know, receiving some sweetheart deal with the federal government that they never even charged him with a felony, right? And if you look at the Ray Epps story, his involvement in January 6th, I mean, he's one of the principal instigators. I think I may have brought up the wrong one. My bad. Uh, fuck. Uh, damn it. I don't think that's right. Uh, what the hell? All right, let me double check real quick. Make sure I have the right one. All right, my bad. All right, <laughs> I guess we'll just go off the cuff. I had the wrong clip. I think I accidentally brought up the wrong link for the wrong episode. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if you... I, I guess we'll start off. Are you a Jew? That's probably, <laughs> the, that's probably the first accusation that's made uh, in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, I'm not a Jew. I, as far as I know, I don't have any Jewish DNA. I mean, I, I, I take a one DNA test that not, no Jew came up. Uh, no, but yeah, you're referencing he throughout his rant, he referred to me as a uh, Silverman and he, yeah, he called me a Jew a bunch of times. I guess that's supposed to be an insult or something like I, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh god oh, oh damn it i thought i had it all right yeah uh so let's get into the so all right i'll try to paraphrase it and i'll try to look for it in a second uh but roughly he's kind of making the straw man that uh the that what we are saying is that all of these right wingers or i mean that's kind of how he portrays it or a, a a vast majority of them are feds or something along those lines and that there's essentially we're implying there's a that he's saying that, oh, that racism isn't real is kind of what he's getting at. Yeah, exactly. He, uh, so I do have his article responding to the Fed files up. And yeah, he says, uh, using Bill White's allegations to, quote, spread the narrative that racism is a fake government program. Uh, yeah, so that, that's basically his criticism of my, rep my reporting. And I don't recall everywhere, anywhere, even suggesting that, um, uh, yeah, you and I, we've done shows like on Gordon call, you know, would, I think we both think he's kind of like a, an American hero and yeah, he's a racist white supremacist, Chris Christian identitarian, but he was totally a victim of the government. They massacred him. And so, yeah, I don't know where he's coming from with that. I'd say more of my thesis is that domestic terrorism is a government program. That, that's what I'd 
that's what I would argue. Um, uh, so, so yeah, I, I don't know if you, I need to say anything more, but that's, uh, it All just right. didn't make any sense to me. All right. I found the clip. I think I may have accidentally hit the next button and that's what fucked me up. Cause I swear I had this up on the right clip before I swore I had it right. All right, here we go. Uh, oh. Now, the Ben Shapiro, Bibi Netanyahu Republican Party, you follow? They like to do this thing where they say that racism is a fake government program. You see. The feds are not infiltrating white nationalist groups to crush the movement. No, 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 no. The government is the white nationalist movement, you see. And all of those guys who think that genetics are real, (laughs) all those guys who think that maybe emptying our treasury into Israel is not in the national interest, well, those guys, they're all a bunch of government agents is really what's going on. (laughs) And, you know, know, they don't have any respect for their audiences. They hate them, really. They're like, you stupid fucking goyim, you believe this shit? Well, I'm just going to keep on feeding it to you until you make me stop, aren't I? (laughs) <laughs> all right yeah that's the extent of it yeah i mean it, it, and it doesn't really get much better I've, I've only watched about an hour of it and the rest of it's just him nitpicking at little details which are all mostly incredibly petty it really does come off kind of as like a a, a grown man hissy fit but while trying to like have this cool face of this is so funny uh, <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you got that vibe as well yeah uh, yeah yeah, I'll, I'll respond to, I guess, he. so his case or his contention is that the FBI is set out to crush his move, if you want to call it white supremacist or Nazi. I don't say Nazi to like dehumanize people. I just think that's like an accurate term. Yeah. Um, but uh, so I'll take that. Uh, yeah, let, let me tackle that. I mean, we know that uh, well, you look at PatCon, so the Aryan Nations – which was a uh, you know a Christian identitarian slash Nazi movement in the 80s, that was almost dead in the early 90s. Like they had an Aryan World Congress, I think in like 89 or 90. Barely anybody showed up. The only people that showed up were like skinheads from Philadelphia, uh, you know the the druggies. Like the movement was pretty much dead. And then the FBI launches PatCon and. By 95, the Aryan Nations was like totally back on the scene. I think there's like a Southern Poverty Law Center report saying it went from like three chapters, like Ohio, Idaho, and maybe one other. And now they have chapters in 50 states again. So like uh, uh, Charlottesville aside, like we have documented proof that the FBI actively subsidizes the Nazi movement. So he's talking out of his ass. It's total ahistorical nonsense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't really know if there's much to respond to him uh, anymore other than, cause I mean, I suggest people, I mean, if I guess maybe I'll probably put it in the video link so people can see his response. So you can see we're being fair. Uh, I mean, he literally just in that kind of goes to your fourth uh, fed files and just goes through and picks every little detail just minor stuff like I think he was even at one point getting mad that you didn't cite statistics or something like I, I don't know sometimes I mean I, I would be annoyed if everything was cited in a paper but <laughs> but I, I don't know I guess it's good sometimes but I mean if you're especially if you're doing like a you know a regular writing like journalism you're not going to cite literally everything now if you write like a book I don't know. It's a little bit of a different story. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 I mean, I don't really know what else to say to him. It really just does come off like he's just kind of throwing it. I don't know if you have any other responses you want to give to uh, his take, because I guess it's kind of your opportunity to say any other thoughts. I mean, uh, are, do you think uh, Headline USA is a uh, is a Zionist owned company <laughs> like or, or, or Zog controlled or whatever the hell you want to call it. We're, uh, we're a website that relies on traffic for its revenue. So we do some clickbait stuff, but no, we're run by a Christian guy who has multiple businesses. Uh, it's not any secret. I'm like, I, I'm not going to say it here because I, you know, he has other businesses that have nothing to do with politics. So I don't, think he wants the info like broadcasted, but like, it's very easy to find in business filings. Uh, You know, there's a couple things I'd like to respond to Cantwell. Like one, so 
on the one hand, he accuses me of uncritically just reporting on whatever Bill White puts in court filings. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, he calls Bill White a close friend still to this day, even though Bill White accused him of being a Fed. And then he accuses me of also being a, you know, a Zionist agent of disinformation. And you could, you could see the contradiction there. Like I'm just reporting on what his self-admitted friend is saying in court filings. Uh, and I only report on the allegations that I can substantiate. Uh, so it's gotta be one or the other. Am I a Zionist agent or am I an idiot who's just uh, regurgitating whatever Bill White, his friend, says. Um, you know, I, I could probably go on all day, actually. I will admit, like, his his criticism did evoke, like, an emotional response oh, yeah. from me when I first saw it. It did get me angry. Um, he calls, like, all my reporting shit, and, I like, I, I have the documents here that I could read uh, read for you right now. If, if you want to fact check any of my allegations about the first story, which is about Bill White being tortured, which he doesn't mention anything about Bill White being tortured. That's his friend. I'm the only person in the world to ever report on Bill White's torture. He should be thanking me. Like if, if he's really Bill is his friend, he should be thanking me for getting the word out about the unconscionable treatment that Bill's been suffering. Like what some friend you are can't well, like with friends like him, like who needs enemies? Um, he, he never mentioned. So the, the most, the, the biggest thing that annoys me is that he never addressed Jeff scoop, who was the leader of the national socialist movement and marched in Charlottesville. Bill White accused him of being an FBI informant the whole time and I think that's substantiated because Jeff Scoop, supposedly after Charlottesville, he has a, this revelation. Now that his group's totally destroyed, everybody's being sued. He starts working with the DHS and the FBI. He's totally reformed. Uh, like this is, he's an obvious, he glows so much. He's definitely a fed and like can't well to this day, you could search Jeff Scoop on his website. He's never mentioned Jeff. I like, I don't know, maybe he's jealous that Cantwell is left hanging in the wind while Jeff got a cushy, like a golden parachute or like an off ramp from the Nazi movement to now uh, can be in legitimate circles. Um, so that, that really annoyed me that he still hasn't talked uh, talked about Jeff Scoop or addressed like that. I think that's like kind of the smoking gun of Charlottesville. Uh, you could cut in anytime you get tired of my rant, but. Uh, no, I'll, I'll let you cut in, but I did just want to point out, this is not substantive at all, but I was always just kind of wondered like, how is this guy so big? And then as soon as I listened to it, I don't know if maybe you guys caught it. As soon as I listened to it, I, I heard it. He literally sounds like an amalgamation of like every talk show host I grew up listening to. That's what he sounds like, you know, especially I grew up in the Northeast. So like that, the, he has that, he has the, uh, the, what's the, the, the cadence down perfectly. And I was like, Oh, okay. That makes sense. I was kind of what, like, all right, he's got, he's got that down. But then the, some of the <laughs> shit he says, you're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> but he's got the cadence down. He's got the word magic. <laughs> so. Yeah. He's a good, he's a talented broadcaster. Yeah. I'll give him that much. Um, uh, another thing he totally, like he totally misrepresented fed files three, which is about another radio broadcaster named Hal Turner. That's an FBI informant. Um, so I'm emailing back and forth with Cantwell and said, you know, I've substantiated Bill White's allegations about Hal Turner. I'm not talking like everybody's known that Hal Turner's an FBI informant for over a decade. That's not what I was referring to. But he knocks down that straw man. He goes on his radio show. Oh, Ken Silva, you really broke the case that Hal Turner's an FBI informant. Everybody knew this. That's not what the story's about. The story's about Hal Turner told the FBI that Bill White was planning to blow up the Roanoke Federal Building with a truck bomb, Timothy McVeigh style. And Bill White filed a report from the U.S. Marshals saying that they were investigating Hal Turner's tip about Bill White about these allegations. And the report runs from a couple months when Bill White was in solitary getting tortured. And Bill White thinks that he was getting tortured in 2009 because Hal Turner told the feds that he was planning to blow up federal buildings. So, like, that's the story. That's a great story. That's a big 
big deal that's totally supported by records filed by Bill White, and he just like totally misrepresented it. Like, like it's that really uh, that kind of annoyed me again. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no. As I was listening, to it, it was just straw man after straw man. He would just he would take a point and almost intentionally misconstrue it. I mean, even just from that clip you saw, you could tell. Like, I don't think anyone trying to give a good faith position of my thought on like Fed infiltration on like the domestic. Uh, the domestic front would say that's my take, uh, and I don't. And I definitely don't think that's your take. Uh, what he laid out uh, at all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, it is on its face because I did want to take a moment to uh, point out. Uh, I just wanted to talk about the concept of Fed jacking as well too, because I know this episode we have been talking about all these indicators that point to him being maybe some sort of informant asset. I don't think he was, I mean, I, I would not at all in any way make the claim he was some sort of actual Fed, but like an informant asset, whatever. Uh, but I do think we also legitimately on the flip side have a problem, especially within our uh, the conspiracy side of community, the parapolitics, especially, I think that might be because it spans, it kind of has this weird uh, thing where it merges the left and right. So they already have these ingrained kind of, uh, you know, uh, and what's the word, the tribalism somewhat in there, and then they're thrown into the same sphere, like in the conspiracy world. But anyways, point being, so there's like already natural enemies within these groups somewhat, and then this this con this like idea of fed jacketing happens a lot, where people, you know, the accusations of being feds that may or may not be uh, founded. Uh, so I guess the only thing is I just would hazard people to maybe just learn to walk and chew gum. Uh, maybe just don't say, if you don't have any sort of like, any indicator, you know, that, that someone could be, a, even if it's just pattern recognition, uh, maybe, maybe don't, or, or, I don't know, be somewhat honest in your actions, I guess, because I, I also, I have seen, especially where I've kind of gotten to this, like, parapolitics crowd later in life, I've heard about all these old, you know, researchers in the past, and then I'll hear people's takes on them, and some be like, oh, they're great, and someone's like, he was totally a fed, and you're like, what, what? <laughs> like, it's like, you almost don't know what to do, and, and and but at the same time there are fucking feds so i, I it is like it, it's you got to be careful just i guess keep your head on straight but i also think like we do lose a lot of good people to fed jacketing as well i think yeah i think the problem with a lot of uh researchers online today is they all just like to play five degrees of kevin bacon like oh this guy knew that this guy's an fbi informant he knew this guy who's connected to this guy and they both worked at the same law firm and this and that and so it's all connected man obviously he's a fed too and as yeah i think as my story shows there's a lot of uh, nuance to parse through here and uh yeah it's really you shouldn't be throwing out these kind of accusations uh, carelessly for sure yeah or at least aim them at your enemies i don't, I don't know <laughs> i'm just kidding I, I don't know it depends there, there, there's nuance to here i i'm definitely not i'm not above saying that i've totally uh, implied someone's probably a fed before or maybe even straight up said they are fed but usually it's because it's like i've been paying attention to their behavior for a while and there's more than one indicator but i it still would say you know don't come at this from a low information i mean don't be that asshole uh you know just because you know someone has political beliefs you don't like or whatever um, you know, that they're a fed because I know a lot of people instantly jump to, oh, this guy is, you know, the identitary racism stuff or whatever the hell or real, what is real? I forget what the hell they always rebrand their shit as. But I mean, I, I wouldn't say that immediately makes your fed. I would say that is a sphere highly infiltrated with feds. So uh, apply that, uh, apply that knowledge accordingly. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. like if, you know, if you're going to a different, different country with a different culture, uh, maybe be aware of that culture, and in that culture, it's there's a tends to be a lot of ass, a lot of assets, feds, informants, what have you. Uh, I don't know if you have any more thoughts, on, I guess, on this this realm of discussion on like fed jacking generally, or if you have any more uh, any more responses you want to give to Chris Cantwell. We probably could have done a whole a whole reaction movie or, or uh, a podcast, but uh, I feel like uh, there he really didn't. It really wasn't even worth it because like as as I was going through it, it was like it's better just put a little clip of kind of his overarching idea because yeah it really was just pettiness through and through yeah and if any of your listeners go listen to chris cantwell and they have any questions about my reporting i'm very accessible just hit me up if you have any questions i guess i uh, the one point i'll grant cantwell is that i referred to james field in my story as a murderer uh the guy who yeah. drove his car into the crowd 
And even though he was convicted of murder, I guess it's a valid criticism to say that there's something, uh, it, it might have been just an autistic kid who took a wrong turn, was surrounded by protesters and panicked. So I did change the terminology in the story uh, after Cantwell's criticism. That's the one valid criticism yeah. I'd say. Uh, I caught that too. Yeah. And I yeah. was like, I, I was like, I agree, but that's like incredibly semantic and petty. Like, yeah. Like he, ki someone was killed. Like, okay, I guess murder implies intentionality, but uh, all right. <laughs> like, especially since it was, I don't feel like that was really integral to your point, but whatever. I just think that does point to it being very petty, but yes, he was technically correct there. He was semantically correct. <laughs> I did find it interesting that he kind of, I never made the case that the driver was some kind of MK ultra victim, but Cantwell did say that on his broadcast, uh, kind of suggesting that I was trying to make that case. Uh, when no, my, my whole case, which he didn't read, he only read half of the article and he stopped right before he got to like the whole point of this is that the FBI, they throw together Antifa on one side far right wing on the other side, let them all fight and see what happens. And it's like a tinder box. It blows up. I'm not saying this was like some kind of like sophisticated operation to get James Fields to drive his car and kill Heather Heyer. I think they just throw shit together and, and watch the chaos that ensues. Um, yeah. So it's different than herding sheep. <laughs> like if anyone sees sheep where they like, literally herd them into one area. It's just now add another group. That's the wolves or whatever you want to call it. Whatever not, makes sense for your metaphor. Or not whatever. complicated. And uh, sorry, the last thing I'll say, probably the last thing is he says, there's no smoking gun in fed files for, uh, and I'll admit like every other fed file story I did is purely factual. The first one's about Bill White's whole story, him getting tortured, Second one's about the National Socialist Movement being created by an FBI informant. Third is about Hal Turner alleging that Bill White tried to blow up a federal building, got him tortured. The fourth one, I kind of wanted to just put out all the federal connections to Charlottesville just to get people to say, hmm, that's, that's interesting. We should look into this more. There is no smoking gun. But the fact that four groups, uh, National Socialist Movement, the Confederate Hammerskins, the Vanguard America, which is later Patriot Front, and uh, the League of the South, they were all part of a coalition called the Nationalist Front. And they were all had been infiltrated by the FBI for years before Charlottesville. Um, and so like these are four Fed groups that all committed violence on that day. I, the first guy... I'm almost positive the first guy to put all that in a package to let readers know. And he kind of hand waves it away. Like, Oh, this is just connecting dots where you don't deserve it. And like, if that's his position, that's fine. But I know you're, I think you're interested in the fact that four, there are four FBI infiltrated groups there. And I, you're, well, I think a lot of people are too. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, there's no smoke. I mean, I guess you could say there are sort of smoking guns depending on the specific claim, but yeah, the overall thesis, there will never be an actual smoking gun, I guess. I mean, maybe I say that, but there, I guess there could be some sort of documentation that came out that laid out some grand scheme of all the shit they did. I guess you could technically have a singular smoking gun, but generally speaking, it's always going to be pointing to a specific example. And then the, and the re return is always going to be, oh, well, you know, that's an isolated example. Like, that doesn't necessarily speak to the whole. And it's like, well, that's kind of the point. We're bringing all these myriad of examples to kind of show you, at the very least, there are all these separate individual examples. Now, if you want to go, hey, this meets my threshold of enough examples to where I think, hey, something's fishy, then okay, join the club. Uh, but otherwise, I don't know, just keep swimming in ignorance. I, I don't know what to tell you. Yep. <laughs> well, well said. Very well said. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, one more thing before we get out of here, because I know you covered the Ray App stuff a lot, kind of ambushing you with this one a little bit. I don't think I've really covered it on my show, and it did kind of sort of get breezed over. I saw a lot of people talk about it, but um, I think this was kind of a main point to a lot of your reporting, because I know later it ended up being heated, it ended up being charged, and a lot of people tried to play the point. They're like, oh, he's clearly not a Fed since they're going to charge him. Uh, and now he did end up getting, I forget what it was, like a six months or a year, and I think it was like, probation or something it wasn't even actual 
jail time. And uh, I just didn't know if you had any thoughts. I mean, maybe you've even done some reporting on it just because uh, I just kind of update people on what's going on there. Because, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I know a lot of people might point to this and go, oh, this is, if anything, to me, that just solidifies more. Like, dude, this guy got nothing. <laughs> like, like, technically, he got something. He got a slap on the wrist in a legal sense. But really, he got nothing. Uh, yeah, and it was the Justice Department recommended that he get 10 months in prison, but a judge just gave him probation. So you're exactly right. Uh, he doesn't, you know, he got off pretty much scot-free. Uh, this is obviously, everybody knows, this is the guy who is telling everybody to go into the Capitol. And th that was responded to everybody calling him a Fed at the time. Uh, what is what more can we say about Ray Epps? I think uh, the interesting thing about the DOJ's sentencing memorandum is they said uh, Ray Epps committed quote felonious activities, uh, but you know we we only went ten months and we only charged him with one misdemeanor and oh he's victim of conspiracy theories. Uh, his his counter filing did dispute the felonious activity claim. Um, but it, it's just interesting that the DOJ, those are the DOJ's words, felonious activity. Uh, the other, other most interesting document I found recently was an FBI report where it said that in July 2021, they had already investigated Ray Epps for stoking the riot and the U.S. attorney in the District of D.C. declined prosecution in July 2021. That's something that I'd, has been really underreported. I think Ray Epps to date is the only person we know that uh, the DOJ actually declined to, to pursue certain charges. And I, I don't know any other defendant that's had that happen to him. And July 2021 was before all this shit hit the fan. It wasn't until October of that year that Thomas Massey asked the FBI director about Ray Epps. Uh, Revolver News published a, a long expose, uh, and it really built from there the whole notion that he was some kind of government provocateur. So it really looks like to me that they were going to shove this whole thing, sweep it under the rug until the heroic Thomas Massey, uh, probably one of the only good guys in Congress, uh, brought it to the forefront. So far from yeah debunking the notion that he's a Fed, I think the recent developments have strengthened the case. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I guess one last thing. Did you see, did you happen to see Ann Coulter going on about this on, on, on Twitter? I glanced at it. Yeah, I, I don't know what her <laughs> deal is. She literally made the claim uh, that he, I, I guess, okay, I guess maybe not literally because I may be remembering this wrong, but essentially something along the lines of uh, he didn't say anything, the, the whole like going to the Capitol or whatever. And it's like everyone just blowing her up with the video. And it's just like, I know you, you, we've gone to the point of propaganda where it's just, oh, don't believe your eyes, uh, which I don't know. I mean, uh, the, I don't know if you saw the like the Jewish tunnels thing recently, uh, which I mean, I know a silly example. I'm not saying draw any crazy conclusions. I have my thoughts and I've talked about them, but uh, <laughs> the they, they there was on the same on the same point. There was recently a fact check thing. came out, I, I don't remember specifically from who where literally the article was like there were there was no. Uh, they said that the fact check was false, and I didn't read it, so maybe there's more to it. I don't fucking know, but all the people I know that that, were, that, that I said that read it said it was bullshit. But essentially saying there wasn't that stained mattress and there wasn't the the uh, the the high chair, and you're like, okay, well, you can make the argument that those aren't things that like you can make some crazy sinister you know conclusion from. But to say they're not there, <laughs> like, that's the same thing as being like, well, Ray Epps, yep, he did not say let's go into the Capitol. But I don't know it's just always funny when we see that level of propaganda, uh, and it, if anything, it just makes me makes me more schizo. Like, what are you hiding? From these? <laughs> I, I got to imagine Ann Coulter's just being incredibly sloppy yeah. there. Yeah. I don't see any reason no, she'd yeah. be trying to debunk the Epps story on purpose. I think if you're not steeped in cases like the Oklahoma City bombing, it sounds very uh, preposterous on its face that yeah. there would be undercover MAGA people, you know, working for the government. It sounds crazy. Yeah, she's been <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But if you, uh, yeah, as you know, and all your listeners know, when you actually dig into the details of these cases, uh, that can happen, and it, and it 
in many cases it does happen and we have proof of that so it's definitely not unreasonable to suspect ray epps uh, that that's for sure yeah i wasn't necessarily saying I, when i said propaganda i just more or less, I, I wasn't i guess it does kind of imply intentional uh, i kind of mean whether it was or not i mean i, I genuinely think she like if that would be such a high degree of retarded propaganda that I just, yeah. I don't know. Like, cause yeah, she was, everyone's just like, are you kidding? Here's the literal video. <laughs> so, right, uh, but right. the, yeah, it, it was just more just funny that, that someone of that, I guess you would say caliber, that's kind of her job being an an <laughs> political analyst would be that, that not there, but uh, yeah. All right. Anyways, well, I guess that's a good place to end it on with Ann Coulter. Uh, you want to let people know where they can find you at. Uh, I don't know if you got any other uh, stuff you've worked on recently. You want to mention real quick or, or, or stuff you want to uh, talk about, but uh, yeah, the floor is all yours. Uh, HeadlineUSA.com, Libertarian Institute at uh, Twitter at JD underscore cashless. And yeah, I should be dropping a, a relatively major story about, Another addition to the Fed files pretty soon about a 2012 domestic terrorism case that was originally billed as the, the biggest DT case in Florida history, but it ended up being like a Whitmer type situation. It really got memory hold. I don't think anybody's actually reported on it, uh, you know, like a comprehensive story about how this was a Fed op. So hopefully um, that'll add to like the historical canon about these kind of cases. Uh, then FBI director Robert Mueller was directly involved. So it's, it's some pretty juicy stuff that'll be hopefully coming in a week or two. Well, hell yeah. I'll definitely read that when it comes out. I mean, shit, I mean, I'm just having to make this a fucking playlist and, uh, <laughs> just get, at this point I've done one for, uh, uh, every fed files. I may as well just keep going. Uh, and it is intriguing. So I'll definitely check it out when it drops. Uh, yeah. With that, uh, everyone who likes this show, you can follow me on YouTube, uh, all major auto uh, rumble. Follow me on Twitter at tower gang, Jose, uh, support me, patreon.com. Snowy Jose 2020, like, share, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. And we are out.